When New York City shut down the subways four hours each day for disinfecting, some scientists declared it a colossal waste of time and money. It looks a bit to me like a, a cleaning theater <laughs> to make people feel more comfortable about using those environments. Bleaching the surfaces will have very, very little impact upon the spread of the disease. That's because it's mainly spread through personal contact. Dr. Jack Gilbert, author of the book Dirt is Good, adds that sanitized surfaces don't stay that way for long. If you sterilize a surface, in a few minutes after sterilization, the microbes from our body are recolonizing that surface. During this pandemic, welcoming some of the germs living all around us may seem scary, but it's generally better than trying to kill them all. The negative consequences of bleaching the environment, especially if you have very young children in the, in the environment, uh, could actually lead to chronic consequences, which um, may be uh, worse. Gilbert says the good bugs we encounter, especially as youngsters, can help prevent food allergies, skin problems like eczema, and even issues associated with autism. So according to many scientists, the bottom line is a preoccupation with disinfecting and sanitizing everything in sight puts us at risk for chronic illnesses. Gordon? Well, Lori, uh, let's get into the details. We've got a lot of questions for you. What about washing our hands to prevent COVID? Is that still necessary? Absolutely, positively. So this is the message we want to shout from the housetops is you still need to wash your hands now more than ever because it's because of the pandemic. What the point is here is what are you washing your hands with? These antibacterial soaps may literally be overkill because they're killing all the good bacteria. So a lot of these health experts just say use regular old soap and water and people say, what does that mean? Well, these are cleansers that don't have the parabens, the phthalates, the antibacterial soaps, things like triclosan, even chlorine, and also, Gordon, believe it or not, artificial fragrances, because all these things have been found in some people to be harmful to the kidneys, to the liver, to the brain, to the hormones and the lungs. And remember, COVID-19 is a respiratory virus. All right, well, there's several mutations that have appeared. Uh, South Africa being very famous, Britain being famous. What, what's the latest on those mutations? So there are a lot of mutations, but scientists are primarily concerned with two that are in the United States right now. One of them is the UK variant, and the other is, as you said, the South African you, ver the South African variant. The UK variant is expected to be the dominant strain by next month. It's already in most states. And the UK variant and the South African variant, which is also here in the United States, but it's been detected in fewer areas. Both of them are much more contagious, anywhere between 30 and 70 percent more transmissible. That means it's so much easier to get. But Gordon, the South African variant is much more concerning because it has been shown to evade vaccines and treatment. The vaccines and treatments are still effective against it, but much less so than the variant, than the, the strains of coronavirus that we've been dealing with for the last year. All right. Well, last month, January, 93,000 Americans died. Uh, it's the deadliest month of the pandemic so far. Tell us some good news. Is there any good news on the COVID front? I've got some. So this is great. The uh, uh, the cases are way down. They're about 40 percent down. That's great news. And uh, so then also hospitalizations are also down. We're now finally below the 100,000 level. And this is because we saw a huge surge after the holidays. Now the deaths, unfortunately, are still very high. We're seeing still more than 3,000 deaths a day. But deaths are a lagging indicator, which means first we see the cases and whether they go up or down. Next, that's reflected in hospitalizations up or down. And last Lastly, deaths up or down. So scientists say we're likely to see that death rate decrease, and we need to hope and pray that we don't see a surge because of these variants we just talked about. All right, let's turn to some viewer questions. Here's a question that's come on Facebook. Brenda asks, can a new bacteria or virus emerge due to us using so much sanitizer and killing off good bacteria? 
So I wanted to repeat again that the plain old soap and water, those are great. We need to continue to do that. And people can go to our website and get a recipe for a cleanser in your home that doesn't have any of the bad stuff in it. But the antibacterial soaps kill basically all of the bacteria, and that can cause superbugs to arise. We've talked about superbugs before. When you kill all the good bacteria, these good bacteria often kill the bad bacteria. But when they die, the bad bacteria can rise up. Sometimes these bacteria are resistant to drugs and can kill people. All right. Well, Christian asks, I've been hearing about wearing two masks. Is that something we should all be doing now? Well, yes and no. Uh, the nation's leading infectious disease specialist, Dr. Anthony Fauci, recommends it. I'm doing it. And uh, basically, you take a surgical mask and wear it underneath your regular mask. But the CDC director says, we're not changing our guidance right now. So far, I mean, currently, the CDC still recommends just one mask. But they do re recommend it being a double layer mask like this one. And so the reason is because the CDC says so many people are not even wearing one mask, that if people would just follow the guidance that they have already put forth by wearing just one mask, that the spread of the disease would decline drastically. Meanwhile, uh, the, Dr. Fauci and others point out that the more of a barrier you, you have, particularly in light of these new variants, the better it is. All right, we've got another Instagram question. Is there really an immunity after you've had COVID? And if so, for how long? And does the immunity apply to the new strains? Fantastic question, because we know that up until this point that people who have had COVID-19 do have immunity for some period of time. That's a little bit in question. We know that people are immune for weeks, oftentimes months, maybe even years after they've had covid but the South African variant is rearing its head, and we're seeing people who recovered from the regular strain of COVID being reinfected with the South African variant. What, what does that mean ultimately for solving the pandemic if the new mutations uh, reinfect the population? And do you have a, a forecast of, of when we can? I guess, get back to some kind of normal? Are, are we going to be dealing with mutations for an extended period of time? Fantastic question. That kind of gets to the heart of the matter of what we're dealing with. And health experts say what it all boils down to is a race against time because we need to get as many people vaccinated before these variations, particularly the South African one, starts to spread. And so uh, we do know that uh, that these that the viruses that rather the vaccines are still effective against the South African variant. And so that's really the best course of action right now is vaccination. Uh, what about the fears of vaccination? Uh, I'm hearing that pregnant women or women in their reproductive years should not be taking some of the new RNA uh, source vaccines. Well, what's your opinion on that? Well, women should talk to their doctors about whether they recommend whether they're your, your pregnant, expecting to get pregnant, or breastfeeding should talk to their doctors about what their recommendations are. But as far as other folks who are hesitant to get the vaccine, right now that's not the issue, Gordon. And that may be down the road, but right now we have so many people who want the vaccine, who desperately want the vaccine, and the supply isn't there. So we need to get these folks who want a vaccine vaccinated, and that's going to go a long way to solving the problem. All right. Well, Lori, thank you for being with us. You're going to always get the latest on the coronavirus, all you have to do is download the CBN News Channel app today, and you can follow Lori Johnson's reports. Hello, I'm Gordon Robertson. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more encouraging videos like this one. Welcome to the 700 Club Interactive Family, and God bless you.